Damn, what is it? Do I got it? Nah, I had to think about it. Let me, let me get in the story mode. All right. Got Diamond's story, and, you know, Diamond is trying to figure out which way is up also. Because, God damn, who done walked up in here? She didn't walk in here and said, uh, who in here is Diamond? Who in here is Diamond? Diamond like, uh... Me? Now, she shows up, and I'm like, all right, here we go. Now, I seen her with the son. I thought she was going to accuse him of getting his ass whooped. You know what I mean? I thought she was going to say, hey, you let my son get beat up out here. But instead, she showed up, and she was, you know what I'm saying, talking about, you still up for that offer? That nigga Diamond said, what offer? She said, teaching my son how to box. He said, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. What's up? What's up? What's up? She's like, mm, okay. So she sizing them, you know what I'm saying? She eyeing them up and down. I'm like, all right, I see what's going on here. Yeah, you know I mean, I see what's going on here. <laughs> on here. She looking at Diamond. We know Leon. Leon got his ass whooped last week. Now, they didn't really whoop his ass good like they were supposed to, but they whooped his ass. Now, I'm not saying they were supposed to whoop his ass, but I'm just saying, if you're going to go do this in a TV show, we're not talking about real life. We don't condone bullying. But in a TV show, man, they should have got off. Pause. But they had him against the wall. I guess that was bad enough. Bing, bing, bing. Whooped on him a little bit. Diamond's looking like, damn, man, I did promise him to teach him how to box. So she's like, all right, bet. If you teach him how to box, you know what I'm saying, then we're going to be good to go. Now, me, as a businessman, I'm thinking, David over here, you already giving this kid free haircuts. Man, you don't need to be wasting time trying to teach this little dude how to box. We seen what happened, man. We seen what happened. Are you guys... If you're Diamond, are you volunteering to do this boxing? Are you volunteering to get in that ring and train this young man how to box? When you got a full-time job as a barber? When you got a motherfucking Mr. Don't Play on your case? I don't care how good the mama look. Who Diamond? It's actually David. Okay, David, you going to teach my son how to box, man? I'm going to be honest with you, man. That shit sounded good when it happened last week, but I didn't expect your son to come back over here unless it was a Sunday. But nah, I really don't have the time nor the patience. And I, I don't think you're like, with all due respect, if I do train your son, um, I would need some kind of compensation. You know what I mean? Is that too much to ask for? Is that is that too much to ask for? Like pay for the haircuts or you're gonna pay for the training i gotta act one of them being paid like you know what i mean because i mean we not together so i mean i'm already giving the kid free haircuts on sunday that's already doing enough for a single mother the my best advice for you leon because i'm not going to train you in this box and my best advice is when you get out of school go directly home don't ride the school bus Go directly home. Don't buy a bicycle. What I need you to do is wait for the teachers to leave and you exit out the back of the building with the teachers and get home. That's going to be the best training I can give until your mom starts paying for some kind of service. But Diamond, he's not me. And this is more in the this is more in TV world. This ain't more in real life. I mean, I help the kids. I even help with homework. Not too much homework, but I help with the homework. Diamond's like, yeah, I'll teach him. Now, Diamond and OG, I'm talking about OG Barber. He looking like, damn, if I was about six months younger, I'd try to get at her, but she feeling you and shit. So OG's looking at it like, ooh, wee. Ooh. -hoo. Damn. 
what y'all doing, man? Y'all y'all being a young boy or y'all letting Leon succumb to the streets? Me personally, I'm yeah, uh, yeah, he we found out last night, Jesse James. I'm gonna I'm reach out to him, but I don't, I don't know if he's gonna come on uh, on the channel. But yeah, OG in here, OG, look, when they said who diamond, that nigga OG gonna point at himself. I don't know if y'all noticed that when they said who's who's diamond, he he OG did this, he gonna. Like, look at OG. OG got that hand on the hip talking about, mm-hmm. Boy, woo. Oh, no, Diamond. You might not know what you're doing with that one right there. He like, looking at OG like, man, shit. I ain't trying to train this kid, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? He's like, God damn, I'm training the kid. You know this training is going to be an uphill battle, though. Y'all do know that. Just from seeing his skill set last week, when they whooped his ass, he didn't even throw a punch back. So, like, this training is going to be really from the beginning, though. Like, I got to even teach him what throwing a punch is. You know what I mean? He talking about, hey, man, wait, wait, wait. Hey, 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 young man, hey. Don't, hey, don't do that. What, what, is that? what is that? Throwing a baseball? What is that? Man, you balled your fist up or something. Put these up here. Don't put your knucks on the inside. You break your goddamn thumbs off. But, yeah, really, all right. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm already looking. I'm like, all right, can I get in the ring with this kid? Nah, man. Man, I don't care how fine she is. I ain't about to get in there and train this kid. I seen him get his ass to a 14, 15, too late to learn how to fight. He's just the nigga that gets picked on. It's unfortunate, but sometimes it's like that, man. I don't have, listen, y'all, I got a PO officer. I got fucking Bennigan on my case asking for a 50 piece midday, talking about another dub on top of that. Man, I ain't got time for that shit. I got 19 motherfucking customers in here. I ain't cutting no hair. Money ain't coming in. Treason is all fucked up. I heard my brother was a junkie. I got a lot of stuff going on right now. I don't know if I can take the time out of my day and help your son out, unfortunately. But he is more than welcome to come up here on Sundays and get that free cut Sunday. You know what I'm saying? I recommend getting here early because a lot of people are hearing about it and a lot of people dropping their kids off on Sundays and skipping all the other days. You know what I mean? So they can try to get their haircut for free. So really looking at my clock right now, it ain't got no battery in it, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I ain't got time for that. She must not know. She must not know what I got going on in the basement. I got body, 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 body. She must not know what Diamond got going on. Oh, I ain't got time to be at the gym. Niggas catch me slipping at the gym, then what? <clears throat> JP, your son said he ain't never going to get caught lacking. What I'm going to do at the gym? Get caught lacking? I'd be damned. i go out trying to teach this young man how to box. Come on, y'all. Y'all got to think real world, man. I'm saying in the movie, man, I mean, in the TV world, yeah, 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 yeah. I ain't helping out in the TV world. In real life, I help out. But in real life, the kid got to be cool, though. Like, I got to already have some type of uh, actual relationship with the kid, Pauls. You know what I'm saying? Some kind of connection. You know what I mean? I got to already be active in the kid's life before I just take a random kid. You know what I mean? Unless I'm like volunteering to do this shit, but like, man, I just seen him get whooped last week. When I used to volunteer at the uh, at the boys and girls club, or no, not the boys and girls club. I was at the boys and girls club as a kid. But in the military, we got um, the kids on base. You basically like uh, depending on your job. Sometimes they were basically like big brother, big sister to them. So I did have a kid that was that lived on base. I used to take back and forth to like soccer practice and stuff if their parents were working. So I, I did have like a little brother. I'm not going to give y'all his name because I think well, he might be. Shit, he might be about 16 now. Yeah, I used to have to take him to soccer practice. I used to watch him. Uh, <laughs> one of the guys in the mayor group, he was a soccer coach. So it was cool, man. You know, now I help the kids in real life, but. Man, if I just seen a kid get his ass whooped, I'm not about to try to teach him how to fight. Obviously, fighting ain't your thing. Uh, we a little too far behind to do fighting. What I could think of is uh, I'm going to go buy the game Battlefield. You know what I'm saying? 
uh, be seven. You know what I'm saying? So you can think of putting a plan in place before you act on it. Like you look outside. Okay, it's four gentlemen at B seven, eight, nine, ten. If I go to, I can go over to K and do one through six. You know what I mean? Let me go do that. You're like, yeah, I'm going to teach you the way to plan this shit out. But going to boxing is crazy with a kid you don't even know. Like, at least my kid, <laughs> I went to the school and I was sitting in the class. Like, you had, like, three of us, you go sit in the class. We help them out with homework and stuff. Yeah, at least, like, my kid, I knew my kid first from school. You know what I mean? Boom. We help out with homework. And then it was, we did we did the soccer practice to keep them active on base. But shit, I ain't even signed up for that. They volunteered me for that, man. I was trying, I was trying to be one of the coaches, man. I had to go to the classroom. I'm sitting in the classroom trying not to fall asleep. The third graders, they smarter than me. <laughs> they raising their hands. I'm like, damn, what's the answer to this? Kids already got it. I'm like, damn, you little motherfuckers are smart. Yeah, man. You know me. Oh, I used to go, like, I used to be at the Child Development Center because I used to do all the water up there. So the kids would be in there, like, do, doing gym hours. I'd have to go into the uh, the kitchen while they go to the gym. So make sure the water and everything was good before they come and eat. Kids were cool. And then I'd be in there, you know what I'm saying? Because you have to, you have to, uh, the child center. So they don't really check those. Like if I was at the main gym, I would have probably gotten in trouble, but I used to be at the, uh, at the child development center. Cause they had the, they had the, damn, what you call it? They had the nursery for the kids. Well, for the, for the, like the, the young, young ones. And then it was like the nursery and the little kids. And then they had like the eighth grade one. So I would go over there the little child development. I'd be in there hooping with the kids. I'd be in full uniform. Oh, more, where you at, man? Um, I'm doing the water sampling. I'll be right back. It's busy over here. Man, I'm in there hooping with the kid. <laughs> Blocking this shit like hell no. Yeah, I used to be over there. They used to like Mr. Moore coming through. But I was cool with a lot of their parents anyway. So, yeah, Mr. Moore used to be over there. I'll be hooping with them. Hooping. They had the little uh, the little frisbee things. You had to, like, throw them motherfuckers and put them on, like, these little latches. <laughs> I mean, I used to be in there all the time, man. I'd be kicking it. Hell, y'all, man, y'all know I'm good with kids. I told y'all I was a freshman. I used to go down to the uh, the daycare at school, and I used to help out with the kids because you got an extra hour after your lunch if you had a kid. But I didn't have a kid, but I used to just go down there and help out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I used to go down there and help out. The kids would take a nap. They'll be getting up. So the girls would be coming in for their kids because it was the district high school. I mean, our high school was the district daycare. So anyone that had a kid in the, uh, the district, you drop them off at our school. So, yeah, I got to see all the girls and stuff, chill down there for a little bit. They take nap time. I used to try to take a nap time, too. They be like, hey, man, you can't be going to see. You got to go to class unless you are down here eating. I'm like, man, that's stupid. That's a stupid rule. The kids can take a nap. I can take a nap. But, yeah, man. Mo is a – I'm not no role model, but Mo look out for the kids. And right now, that's what Diamond is doing, man. That's what Diamond is doing. Looking out for this kid, man. He came in here with the AirPods in. He ain't hearing shit. He don't hear the haters. But see, you take those AirPods out your ears, you can hear when they running up on you. When you hear, like, when you hear this, you should already know your first instance should be, if you hear, you should know that you need to get low, get away from the situation. Get away from the situation. As soon as you hear people running up on you, you should already be, ah. But you ain't going to hear that with them AirPods in. I don't like, when I was younger, I wouldn't even wear like headphones when I'm out and about. I got to be in a, a controlled environment before I wear headphones and walk around somewhere. Just didn't trust nobody. So after the old girl shows up, Leon's mama. It pulls up. Bennigan shows up. And when Bennigan shows up, we know it's some bullshit. 
Finnegan said, man, look, man, I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't even going to stunt. My sister doing bad, man. You fucked my sister up, man. They took me off your case, man. I said, is this dude kind of, is he related to Jannar? What's wrong with this dude? Is he using this money to help his sister or is this dude using the money to help himself? What y'all thinking? Is Bennigan using this money for his sister or he's using this money for himself? But well, Bennigan wants 50 off the top, Pauls. Diamond's like, man, we ain't got that kind of money. But the thing is, once somebody starts to question you, this is where things get bad. Because we all agree that Samson Bennigan, Sam says, man, We don't even have any words for you. I'm disgusted. Bennigan shows back up on 50 off the top, and Diamond said he ain't got it, man. This is Diamond's story, man. Diamond ain't going to stand up for himself. Someone's got to do it. Bennigan, we ain't got it. I'm just going to be real with you. We ain't got it, and you ain't getting it. Pause. We bad getters over here. We were bad givers. You know what I'm saying? If we were bad givers, we wouldn't even be watching this channel. We bad getters over here. You know what I'm saying? We just came up with that terminology today. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. One thing about us, man, we bad getters. We ain't no bad givers. You know what I mean? We ain't giving shit. Give them nothing. Take everything. Pause. But we ain't playing around, Bennigan. Now, Bennigan's like, nah, fuck all that. I need 50 bands. 50 bands? Who the fuck got 50 bands just laying around? Who just got 50 bands just laying around? Now, I don't. Maybe some of y'all do. Maybe some estimating y'all. Y'all hey, y'all said y'all some bad getters. You know what I'm saying? I ain't pocket watching. I'm just saying y'all said that y'all be doing what y'all do. So I'm like, all right, if they saying what they do and, 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 and they really do it and they back up and everything lines correctly, then all right, they do what they do. But they might have 50, Ben, again, but we ain't got 50. Tommy. Janar, Diamond, D-Mag, JP, Mo, Kate. We just ain't got 50 laying around nowhere. Marshall. We just ain't got 50, Bennigan. Bennigan said, I don't care. I'm the law. I'll turn you in. I said, oh, my God. All right, man. 50,000. All right. All right. All right. Fuck. Fifty fucking thousand, Bennigan. Fucking show back up. All right, fifty thousand, man. Shut up. Yo, don't tell on me, man. Shit. The beginning. Uh, I be getting ready to call you a bitch ass nigga every time I see you, Bennigan. But you lucky that you holding this motherfucking police shit over my head. Fifty thousand, man. Fifty fucking thousand. All right. Cut me some slack. Shit. Come up in here, ain't seen your ass in fucking four episodes, and now you want to show up and ask for 50. You just took the money out of my safe, man. We ain't got the 50, but shit, you want all right, bet I'll go fucking find fucking 50,000. But we this is it. This is the last time. Bennigan said, No, nigga, this ain't the last time, nigga. I tell you when it's the last time. I said, Oh shit. Fuck. Now. You got to remember, we in the dope game. And I was always mentioning that Jannard is broke, but he not regular people broke. He dope game broke. He still got bread, but he's broke. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Well, I knew that Diamond and Tommy and them had the money because they were able to double up on the double up on the re-up. You remember? They went for the re-up that they already doubled up on, and they wanted to double up on the double up. Doubling up on the double up is like a little something, something on top of a little something, something. You got to really be moving that number. You got to have that quantity. You got to have that work, that drive, that dedication, that hit the like button, that subscribe if you're new to the channel, 
because Bennigan wants 50,000 and I'm on the road to 50,000 subscribers. So unfortunately, me and Bennigan are kind of similar. The only thing is I'm a real nigga because we know three out of 10 are real. I'm one of the real niggas and we trying to find another two. And Bennigan ain't one of them. No, yeah, there's a huge difference between us. Pause. But hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Bennigan won 50,000 diamond. He agrees. Now, while all this is going on, we know Tommy was outside watching. Tommy doesn't know what the hell is going on because we didn't really know what the hell was going on because Bennigan just popped back up. So Tommy was just as confused as we were confused. But we realized that Bennigan is still asking for more money off the top of the money because, remember, these drugs that were put in the street were put in the street because of Diamond and CBI before Diamond got locked up on that 15-year sentence. You see what I'm saying? If you follow me, if you follow me, put a three. If you follow me, put a three. But Tommy comes in to talk to Diamond. It's like, hey, man, why are you talking to Ben again? But we just realized what's really going on. But we stepped back, and I said that three out of ten niggas is real niggas, and Mo is one. I thought we were about to say that Diamond was number two because we thought Diamond was about to oh, when he came in, he asked him for some money. We ain't fucking with that. But Diamond Lock said it was about the free haircuts. Now, we already had issues with Ben again in season one. So for Diamond to be this loyal, I'm because I'm really saying that Tommy's in charge right now just because it is CBI, it is, it is, it's Diamond's operation and his crew, but he can't really function like he's supposed to with Bennigan on his ass. Mr. When Tommy comes in, he's assuming the worst. That's automatic snitching. Now, I guess Diamond is looking at it from the step as, all right, look, I ain't going to tell Tommy about that. I don't want it to be a big deal. And the reason he said that is because he's initially thinking that it's only 50 bands off the top. We don't get the information about Ben again wanting another 25 until they meet up in the vehicle. So as of right now, he's playing down, playing this game. Oh, it's nothing, pay off this 50000 and it'll go on about his way. But one thing we know in the power universe and in the real world, when that greed gets to kicking in, that little bug get into your system, that's when... The end is near. You know what I mean? Bennigan would be all right. He would still be living right now. If Bennigan would have just took the bands, he already took the money out to save, took the 50 bands and went on about his life. But he continued to pursue and to pursue. So from Diamond's standpoint, I'm not going to tell nothing to Tommy because it ain't nothing. All it is is a little, you know what I'm saying, a little fitty here, you get up out of here. So that's why Diamond didn't say anything to Tommy. Now, I know a lot of us, we look like, damn, that ain't loyal. But realistically, he's looking at it as, hey, I paid him off. That's it. Don't make it a big deal because Tommy's going to flip out. You guys have to remember, Tommy is a crazy motherfucker. So if you tell Tommy, hey, Tommy, Bennigan came and asked for $50,000, Tommy is going to react the same way he did with Chewy and just go kill Bennigan. So that's why he was thinking, let me not tell Tommy because I don't know what Tommy's going to go do. Remember, he has to, he's going to be at the barbershop working. He has to have a job that's part of his parole, so he has to stay here. And we know that Mr. Don't Play might pop up at any time, so Diamond has to play it safe. But for time, I know what's going on, and he doesn't believe that it would be an intimate conversation, and I'm not meaning in that way. But them two being that close and low-key whispering with no one else around hearing the conversation. If he is police, then the, it would be all right for everyone to hear exactly what you're talking about, asking for free haircuts. For the community you see what i'm saying you see what i'm saying so that i mean withheld that information from Tommy because he's easy man but sandra i'm gonna have my board it's like like you see i'm on my brother's couch so i've been in my brother's spot for shit since july 2nd been in my brother's spot since july 2nd october 5th i head on out to germany man and I get to start the next chapter in my life, which I think might be the best chapter in my life. And then we're going to get situated. So by the time Raising Canaan come back on, we will have a suspect board. We're going to be back in full effect. I'll be able to, you know what I'm saying, switch up the uniforms depending on the night, you know what I'm saying, actually get fly a little bit and take us on into the new year. But Bennigan is on the ace and Bennigan want to eat 50. I'm talking 5-0. Meet me up later. I'll send you the coordinates. I'll send you the coordinates. Send you the coordinates. Okay. So can you guys kind of 
on the reason why Diamond didn't tell Tommy about Benigan 150. That, that, that's legit. What y'all thinking? Oh yeah, Sandra. I'm gonna have the I'm gonna have the board for probably the end of the season, probably like the last couple of episodes. But yeah, we're gonna have all that going. We're about to do all of that, man. That right there is I enjoy all of that. Putting the board together, entertaining y'all. That's cool to me. You know what I mean? Get up here, talk a little bit shit. That's cool. That's cool. That's my signature right there. You know what I mean? And we got to bring in some more props. I don't know. I might bring in. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to have limited access to things unless. Well, I can Amazon it, but you ain't going to get it next day. We're going to see. Mm -mm. I was asking, do you guys think that's an explanation that's good enough on why Diamond didn't tell me? Because he didn't really. I'm going to say he didn't know if he wanted. I don't know, man. I'm looking at it as he didn't tell Tommy because he didn't want Tommy to flip out about the 50 bands. Because you got to remember, Diamond is on parole. So it's like, all right, let me do this 50,000 and then hopefully I'll be good to go. So maybe he didn't want to mess up like meeting with Bennigan or Bennigan and told somebody else. So it's really you trying to protect yourself at the moment. Oh, here we go. Yeah, right when we get ready to get started. Hold on, let me see. All right, so you just got Ben again stopping, again stopping by talking about fifty piece, man. I ain't got that fifty piece, man. I keep trying to tell him, but he ain't trying to listen. I keep trying to tell him, but he ain't trying to listen. And I think that's where the disconnect comes from. You know what I mean? The disconnect comes from. Now they get to train, and. This is all, I'm, uh, I'm 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 this as nice as I can. Young man, just trying to find his way in the world. Now I come up to this gym. What is this? West Side Stoppers. I come up to this gym every now and then. Every and I might get in the ring. I might spar a little bit. You know what I mean? But for some reason today, I seen Diamond in the ring with this dude, and I'm like, all right, bet. I go over to the ring. I'm in the corner. You ain't seen me yet. I'll show you guys when it when it happens. But we got young boy over here, Leon, trying to do these. Sit up. Look at him. He hurting. Look at him. Yeah, what is all of this training for? What are we doing this for? But we need this training. We need to get some endurance, some strength. You know what I mean? We got to get some strength in the core. We got to be prepared because we know... The first target was that core. Remember, they came up to him and hit him in the gut. An uppercut to the gut is different than the elbow to gut. Elbow to gut is to catch you off. You know what I'm saying? Catch you off guard. That's the elbow to gut. The elbow to gut is really a defensive move. A lot of people think it's an offensive move, but no, it's a defensive reaction. Elbow to gut, I mean. But the uppercut to gut, now that's an all-out attack right there. That right there is you are coming to do damage. The uppercut the gut is a tearing up the gut movement. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Just ball your fist up right now and just do the uppercut motion. And just realize that hitting you in your gut. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not the gut. See, an uppercut to the gut is different than a defensive elbow to gut. Like I said, a lot of people get the elbow to gut confused. It's a defensive move. It's not an offensive. It's just a ah, just a quick reaction. It's just automatic. Elbow somebody in the gut. That it get no matter who it is, it's always gonna catch them off guard. Hey, hey. And here, dude. Now, Janar, he's just pacing. <laughs> hey, man, what we gonna do all of this for? Hey, bro, are you the boxing instructor or am I the boxing instructor? 
Your mama told me that you needed help. Just do as I tell you, bro. It's day one, nigga. Because if anything, we're going to bring Mo in the ring. And Mo, when Mo get in the ring, he treats everybody. Hey, when you get in that boxing ring, even if they are younger, and they in their box, and you're just sparring, you ain't trying to knock nobody out, but you try and give them a good workout. You know what I mean? He told me, man, why we got to do all this? He said, man, because if Mo got in the ring with you, you wouldn't be able to make it with Mo. And Mo is out of shape. Mo be tired. Mo got a bad hit. Mo get in there for one minute. Mo got to sit down for 10. So I hear him asking, like, hey, uh, Diamond, man, just give it up, man. This kid, ain't, he ain't got that fighter. He ain't got that dog in you know, him, man. This kid's, man, get him out of here. Your best bet, kid, is to run home from school, man. Your best bet is to wait for your mama to come and pick you up, man. It ain't no, it ain't no coming back from this. Hey, man, Diamond, what's all this uh, wax on, wax off stuff, man? He said, man, we got to get your endurance up, man. You look, man, you a young boy and you out of shape. He said, Tom, do some punches. He said, huh. Huh. I said, what is this, Taekwondo? Diamond in here getting a good sweat in Paul's. He over here actually punching and doing shit. This young boy over here, like, man, what's going on? He, Hell no, man. I'd have to call that nigga mama and come pick this boy up. And then Diamond starts talking about his childhood, man. My dad was strict as a rattlesnake. This good male figure in this life. Because you know, we all. We all, you know, saying we all know kids like this. I, I joke around, but we all know kids like this. He ain't no fighter, or nothing. He just, you know, saying the kids into other shit. He shouldn't have to be no fighter. I know everybody's always saying, "Oh, my kid gonna be tough." Like, man, man, let the kid just be the kid, man. And so, you know, all jokes aside, it's like it's fucked up. But at least Diamond is actually trying to help. Now, even for me, I look at it like, all right, this is just getting him out the streets. Now, of course, niggas are gonna hear that he's boxing. They gonna try you. That's the only thing with taking boxing. When you start doing any mixed martial arts or any kind of like physical training, like you start getting swole, people going to try you, especially if it's those kind of knuckleheads, like the ones that uppercut the gut. So him going to boxing and people saying, oh, yeah, he go to boxing, they definitely going to try and see how it should apply to the street. But when you're in the street, there are no rules. I don't care what nobody say. Talking about shoot a fair one, nigga. This is the streets. There ain't no fair one. If you're trying to fight, that means we fighting for our lives. No weapons, but we fighting for our lives. It means anything goes. This is a street fight. Now, if this was a sanctioned fight in a boxing ring, then okay, we get rules that we need to abide by. But if you were just running up on you, whooping your ass every day, no, there's no shooting a fair one. It's getting revenge every day of the week but i don't condone none of this now diamond here talking about man jogging place for a little bit man we gotta get your endurance up but then oh that i would have pulled oh that i would have pulled now everyone said that this is a good gesture do you know what i'm talking about someone explain to me what i'm talking about diamond pulled a mo gesture Everyone's talking about this is a good deed. This is a good jester. This is what you're supposed to do to the community. Train the them out. He did all that just to pull off a mo move. This is the same building that Michael Jackson, uh, Michael Jackson shot. Uh, Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? You've been hit by a smooth criminal. Dun, 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 dun. That's the window. It was a sound. He pulled a mo move when he got up out of here. He pulled a mo move when he got up out of here. I said, man, that's low key kind of player. That's low key kind of player. He said, I'm about to get out of here. I got to make a run. He told nigga to catch the bus of your mama. He didn't even get the kid a ride home. He said, oh, yeah, I'm done with this training. I said, yeah, that sounds like me. I don't know if I can take you home, little man. Uh, your mama told me where y'all lived, and then they look like a neighborhood I don't belong in. You know what I mean? That's treason territory. You know what I mean? You got to find a ride home. 
Damn, you told the kid you got a ride, you got to find one home. No, nah, I can't know. This is right here, man. This is right here where Michael Jackson was. Oh, you been hit pop, 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 pop. You been struck by pow, a smooth criminal. Lenny, are you okay? Are you okay, Leon? Leon, are you okay? Leon, are you okay? That made Leon walk beat up this nigga Leon on the way home, man. Someone needs to call Leon's mama. What's Leon's mama named? Gianna or something like that? Someone call Leon's mama and let her know that, man, yeah, he left the, the boxing studio a couple of hours ago, man. I don't know if they whooped his ass or not, but I couldn't give him a ride home. Didn't no one, didn't no one speak on Diamond leaving the kid at the boxing gym? No one, no one. Remember, I was telling y'all, I was talking all that shit. Oh, I wouldn't do this. Everyone said it's a good gesture, but no one called Diamond out on leaving the boy at the boxing ring. He said, you got to ride. I got to go. Like, damn. He left the boy up there, man. And he knows that this boy attracts ass. This young boy, they ran up on him. They seen him do a speech at a Stop the Violence protest. They ran up on him at the barber shop. The dude, they see this little kid at the barber shop. Diamond was supposed to get his boy a ride home, and he he's at the boxing ring because he can't fight. He needs protection. P R O Pro nigga. You used to be pro nigga. Protection, nigga. This boy needs it. Damn. Hey, for real, Eric, the track of ass whoopers. I don't make these things up, man. I just tell y'all what I see. Now, he hops in the car with Bennigan to drop off that 50 piece. Ain't nothing worse than being sweaty, but being sweaty and owing a nigga money is two different. Hey, these two should never be in the same, like, you know what I mean? Unless you like hooping and betting, you shouldn't never owe a nigga money and you sweat. You know what I mean? Unless y'all just got done hooping or, you know what I'm saying, some kind of sport or activity where y'all were gambling. You know what I mean? So he pulls up with the 50 piece and Ben again get to talking to him like I get to talking. Say, hey, man, you ain't no rookie, man. Put that motherfucker in the glove department. You know what I'm saying? Because if the feds are taking photos, I don't know what he put in the glove department. He put something in the glove department? I don't know. But if he just sets it right here out in the open, now I'm inclined to see what it is. You see what I'm saying? Plausible deniability. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I don't know what he put in there. He put something in the motherfucking glove department. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that, that's on him. I don't know. I ain't looking there. I don't know what that is. But on top of this 50 piece, he tells him, listen, not only do I want this 50 because I know you're getting money over there. I heard about you. I heard, man, I heard Mo was over there. Now, he ain't tell me nothing, though, because he don't talk to the police. But I heard Mo was over there, and he getting money, and he sweep the flows. You know what I mean? If I'm getting money, then you know we get money over there. But that's keep that on the low. Don't let nobody know. So he's like, look, I want an extra 25 piece on top of that 50. Now, if you don't know math, let me say, got five with a zero at it. He want another two. So two on top of that would make that five or seven. But he said he wanted 25. And five with a zero, five oh. Five oh makes five. Seventy-five thousand dollars in one. Wait a minute. I just, I just, I just brought fifty thousand dollars. What do you mean another twenty-five? Hey, 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 again. I can say five. We can do. I can probably, I can probably scrounge around and get like another five piece. You should have probably let me know what fund that you wanted seventy-five. I could have probably got that seventy-five, but I can only come up with maybe another five right now. And it's kind of late in the evening, too. I'm going to be honest with you. I can maybe get you, like, 2500 so we can do 52.5, maybe. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. What the fuck going on, man? I can't come up with... I can't come up with 75, y'all. What y'all doing? Are y'all trying to come up with another 25 off top? Or y'all like, fuck it at this point.
What y'all doing, man? Do what? 25, nigga. I told you earlier we didn't have the 50. We came up with the 50. Now you're asking for 25 on top of the 50 I just gave you. So by the end of the night, you want another 50? Another 25? I apologize, Ben, again, man, because you got me tripped. Wait a minute. Give me a second. I gave you fifty thousand dollars. You took a uh, hundred from the safe. Now you're asking me in a couple hours to come up with another twenty-five. So one hundred plus fifty is one hundred and fifty plus twenty-five. We got one hundred plus fifty is one fifty plus twenty five if we break this down easier and we go twenty five plus fifty is seventy five plus a hundred one seventy five so you stole a hundred I'm dropping fifty and you want twenty five on top so two hundred thousand Minus 175 is 25. So if I bring another 25, that makes 75. But if I, if you ask me again for 25, that'd be 200. Hey, Ben, again, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, real quick, hold on, hold on. 50, then you want 25. You took 100. If you ask for another 25, that'd be almost 200. Fifty plus twenty five is seventy five. Come up with seventy five dollars by the end. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where are you getting this extra twenty five from? Where's this extra twenty five coming from, y'all? Is your sister that sick? Like, is your sister really that fucked up? Like, wait a minute. Is the bank? I mean, not the bank, but the hospital is asking for seventy five thousand. You just took a hundred thousand, bro. Where are you getting this extra twenty five from? I'm trying to figure out where this 25 is coming from. I, I just paid 50. Where, where's this other 25 coming from? Where did we get this number from? I, I said this is going to be a one-time deal. We done. Where are you getting this other 25 from? Because I'm looking at it on my calculator, and then my calculator is saying that's 175000 I ain't the best. Five, oh, it's what? Four zeros after 50,000? Five, one, two, three, four. So okay, this fifty thousand, and then you said you want another twenty five thousand tonight. So that'll be the plus sign, the little T, two five zero zero zero. Ooh, well, when I press this equal button, that's saying seventy five. Is that is that what that is? Seventy five. What is it? Seventy five. Twenty-five thousand. Yeah, damn. I'm gonna be out again. Whatever you gotta do, whoever you gotta go tell on, like I do, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. We not coming up with seventy-five. We not coming up with seventy-five, man. I, I don't know which way you flipping numbers, but twenty-five about in the air. That that's crazy. Twenty-five out the air is crazy. I was trying to figure out, like, okay, maybe if I carried the one, maybe too far, or. I was okay, 55, what was that interest? But it wouldn't be any interest because he just asked for this and that. Like I, I was, I was, I don't know, man. I was kind of confused. I was kind of confused. You know what I mean? I was kind of lost. <sighs> Damn. What can't you stand or do? What can't you stand or do? That is the bonus question. What can't you stand or do? That's the bonus question. So Ken don't want to keep asking. That's the bonus question. And there ain't no more. There ain't no hints. There ain't no nut. What can't you stand or do? That's it. No, 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 no clue. No hint. No nothing. 
Y'all want a hey, y'all y'all want tough questions? All right. Yeah, there we go. We got one with that five thousand dollars though. Well, none. 25 off top. So he hops out and Tommy pulls on the PR the time. Are you snitching? Now he ain't doing no snitching or nothing. He's just telling the truth now. Because what's the procedure? We got a gun in your face. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. So he lets them know Benny been asking for this money. And hey, Tommy said, we ain't doing that shit no more, man. That shit is over with. We good. We're going to change these phones out. So Diamond's like, all right, bet. we'll do that. But he ends up going to talk to his lawyer where she pulls up to the barbershop. That's all together. 225 all together with what he got out to say. Yeah, I don't remember what he got out to say. That's why I was just like, we'll just say it was 100. I couldn't remember what he took from the safe. Now y'all gonna have to work. This is the easy one too, but y'all gonna have to work. I have no clue. I'm gonna look over there if I don't see it. I ain't seeing. I ain't. I ain't. Y'all figure it out. The lawyer said that Rojas and them is tripping. The lawyer said that Rojas and them is tripping. I don't even know what crew they in anymore. They supposed to be CBI, but she said they tripping. That nigga said he don't care if the brick for five dollars, five dollar bricks, five. Five, five dollar bricks. You know what I mean? Five, five, five dollar bricks. So the lawyer is like, "Look, let me tell you something, man. Rojas. A lot of people don't really fuck with Rojas, but Rojas stood tall, man, as long as he could, man. Like Rojas was rolled in there. She, hey, she had the drugs." He said, fuck all that. I ain't saying shit. You trying to set me up. You can't get me like this. He fought to the very end until he realized, like, damn, well, I ain't snitching on nobody. I ain't telling on nobody. So he, hey, he held it down. I give him that. And then even after he held it down, Rojas said, man, fuck all that, man. Put some hits out on the streets. And he still tried to buck the system. He still tried to buck the system. Damn. And Seamus is like, hey, come see me. What, nigga? Damn. And we already know what happened. Now, they got a 50-piece. They got a 50-piece. Remember, Tommy says, hey, you can take that 50 or you can leave with that 50 or you can get the 200. So it would be 200 to work with it. By giving them information because we know that the feds is watching and it's potentially a Rico going down because the lawyer told Diamond that. So Tommy is looking at it like this would be a $200,000 investment. You give us all the information. Diamond is like, bet that I actually work. We come together, put this money together and get him off my fucking back. Now, you can't ask for a better plan than that. The only thing is Bennigan don't give a fuck about none of that. Bennigan don't give a fuck about none of that. He pulled a Thule out. He said, I ain't working with no drug dealers. But little did he know that this might be the last mistake that he ever made. And but game over. D Mac came downstairs, had that Thule. He had the Thule on him. And then he gets scared. He gets scared. Bennigan is gone. And they don't know what the fuck they're going to do next. They don't know what they're going to do next. And that's the diamond story. That's the diamond story. It's a sad one, but it's the diamond story. Man. Like, make it up. One thing we can't do is make it.